not only we defend and protect our own lives, but also of lives anywhere else in the world. Because of the pressure, because of the war, our search and rescue team has a lot of experience. We have intelligence, we have search and rescue, disasters management, medicine, field hospitals, first responders from all the fields. If you have the capabilities and you have a neighbor not as privileged, you must help him. It's the Jewish values. Israel is a speck of a country. We're small in population, we're small in landmass, and yet we leave a huge mark when it comes to showing help, to sending aid to countries in crisis. And where does this come from? There's this concept in Judaism called tikkun olam, which means literally just, just fixing the world or mending the world. From the Syrian civil war, to conflicts in Africa, or the Ukraine at the moment, anytime there's a call for action, Israel sends teams, both medical and humanitarian, to lend a helping hand around the world. We're about to meet Dani Ayalon, who's a former Israeli ambassador to the United States, but also a very high-ranking Israeli diplomat. And for many, many years, Dani was responsible for countless humanitarian missions that Israel sent to countries around the world. Ambassador Ayalon, we're here talking today about how Israel has always been helping other nations around the world. Well, first of all, Mati, Israel is a Jewish state. And two of the core values of Judaism is love your neighbor like yourself. And if you save one person, it's akin to saving the entire world. If you have the capabilities and you have a neighbor which is not as privileged, you must help him. And this is what we do, and we have been doing it since the 50s. Considering Israel was officially established in 1948, it is remarkable that as early as the 1950s, the young state was already finding creative ways to share with the less fortunate countries. First of all, you become a showcase. In the 50s, even before the decolonization, African countries were still colonized by the European. The civic society was very poor, and we would invite them here. It was a real showcase of how to build a community based on agriculture, on industry, on science and technology. And then those students who came here went back to their countries to teach others. And then we were sending Israeli experts to these countries to teach and train because we have done it ourselves to ourselves and very recently. If you take a big country in Europe, they have not built their own nation. They were born into it. So our knowledge was firsthand, was up to date, and was very, very appropriate for those countries. But we had to solve problems without heavy natural resources, without a big budget, without having endless manpower exactly. or endless land. Exactly, because yeah. you know, Rich countries, sometimes they are not constrained by yeah. budget. So their solutions uh, need a lot of capital invested. Our solutions are to do it without all these resources, which those countries do not have. Since those early days, Israel has continued to offer knowledge and aid across the globe. Be it a country thousands of miles away, or even a neighboring enemy state, Israel has made it its policy to extend a helping hand. There is a special department, which is called International Cooperation, mm -hmm. and this is where we help as much as we can, food and water and energy. And then, unfortunate with many natural disasters, mm -hmm. whether earthquakes in Mexico or in Turkey or in Haiti. What can we bring to the table? I mean, we're a small country, we're far away. What do we have that they don't have? Well, I would say that first-hand experience is invaluable. When you talk about search and rescue, we have been doing it here ourselves after enduring two Palestinian intifadas, the huge terror waves, when we have lost a lot of people until we knew how to really take care of people in the most efficient way. Because we had to sustain all those, unfortunately, man-made disasters, but the result is the same. Bodies and fire and collapsed buildings, and this is where we go with search and rescue operations, and all this knowledge that we have applied on ourselves truly really was proven successful. When you think about the big picture, it's this incredible image about how we've, in almost in a miraculous way, maintained 
optimism, even though the natural reaction is bitterness and hatred and, and anger and pessimism, and we're gonna take this hardship and we're gonna flip it and we're gonna use this to do good externally. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. We believe that uh, God helps those who help themselves. You have to be active, not just reactive. The cliche is that uh, necessity is the mother of invention. We had to do it, simply. You know, we had to fight the desert. We had to fight lack of water. And then, of course, all the terror. And this is some things that we can really impart to the countries which are less developed. It's a role that we didn't seek, but we are there and we want to be there and we will continue to be there because this is what I think makes also lives worthwhile. God promises that we'll be the chosen people and a light to the nations, but he never said it was gonna be easy. Absolutely. <laughs> and we believe that as we bless others, we will be blessed. Welcome back. We know that the Bible calls Israel to be a light to the nations, and we just saw how Israel is really trying to be a light wherever it can. Yeah, and it really takes an act of God for this to work. I mean, it doesn't make sense in the practical sense. We're small people in a small land with not that much reach to the rest of the world, and somehow, when there's a need to help or there's a need for something good to come out of this land, it happens. Do you think it's a result of our history? It has to be. We were a nation that came out of the Holocaust and you know, countless difficult events. And I think there's something in the mindset that says, well, no one was there for us. We might as well try to change that and do something better for other people. Look at any conflict happening today. There'll be Israeli field hospitals, aid organizations, humanitarian workers, and we're always the first on the ground. We don't wait for other people to say, please help us. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's doing God's bidding for the Jewish people. Let's see more about that story. Let's watch together. When disaster strikes, Israel is there to help. The IDF search and rescue team that's gained decades of experience here on the ground, working through terrorism and wars, has taken that experience and that information and turned it to the betterment of the world. So much so that the field hospitals built by this unit are ranked number one by the United Nations. I'm on my way to meet Colonel Golan Vach who's the commander of the Israeli search and rescue team that's part of the IDF's Home Front Command. And we're meeting him at the headquarters of his unit where we're gonna see all their gear that's lined up waiting to travel to the farthest corners of the earth to help people in need. Well, good to see you. Good to see you, Matty. How are what you? What a place you got here. You see here, above you have the tents, here you have personal protective equipment, mm. and the yellow are the base of operation, and the communication devices is over there. We are obligated to have everything on trucks in two hours. So it's all ready to go. So we are a unit inside IDF. We are all reservists, 500. We are in alert 24-7, and Eight hours from alert, we are at the airport with 17 tons and 136 people ready to go. Israel's Home Front Command was created in 1992 following the Gulf War, which was the first war since Israel's establishment where the civilian population was directly under threat. In the Gulf War, Israel got SCAD missiles inside borders on civilians on the center of Israel. So when the state of Israel understand that the threat is different. We change everything. We change the concept that led to decision to establish search and rescue battalions. My unit is specialized in search and rescue solutions for complicated situation in Israel mm -hmm. and abroad. What do those capabilities look like, technically speaking? First of all, we arrive fast. Israel has sent delegation to more than 25 countries. Most of them suffered from natural disasters like earthquakes, hurricanes, fire, floods, terror attacks, engineering failure like Surfside Miami. We are well connected to all intelligence resources worldwide. We know immediately. So after a few moments from the incident, we can offer intelligence disasters management, medicine, first responders, field hospitals. And you can ask if you have 3,000 responders on site, why do you need another 10? 
they know that we bring something else to the table, which is experience, methodology. Our enemy is the clock. And to win the clock, we need to act with several disciplines, all collaborated, and to give the answer very fast. When every second counts, preparation is key. This is a training site that you train breaking and lifting and cutting and supporting structures. Our last stop was at the Homefront Command simulated disaster training site. We put people inside and in the first stage, the canines should find the people. We customized it to Ethiopia. So we're standing in, in a motel in Ethiopia that collapsed? Yes. And you, as a commander, should enter to assess. Some of the techniques is made by engineers, mm -hmm. some of them by other specialists, metal, fire cutting. We, as a unit, collaborate all the skills to one effort. If anyone's followed the news, they've seen people in your uniform with your insignia traveling to every place in the world that there's a disaster. It, why is the Israeli army putting all these resources, people, time into disasters happening outside of the country? It's very simple. Mm -hmm. It's the Jewish values. It's the value of saving life. For thousands of years, we could not extend a hand. But today, we are a strong country. We have the ability to help other people to save life. We are ready. Helping others is part of Israel's DNA, not only on a military and governmental level, but on a civilian level too. I'm on my way to meet with Moti Kahana, who's been saving lives across enemy lines in Israel's neighboring Arab countries for years. Hey there. How are you doing? I'm doing well. You're a businessman who's turned into a philanthropist, and you've been going around the world for a decade now, trying to help people in very problematic situations. Let's start with the important question of why? Where does this coming from? Because I can. In 2016, civil war had been ravaging Syria, and Moti began to smuggle tons of supplies into the country and bring thousands of women and children across their border and into Israel for medical attention. About 200,000 dead by then, or more. And they're bombing them, they're dropping barrels of you know, chemical warfare from the sky. They're dropping- Genocide. Explosives. I mean, they're Genocide. systematically killing their people. Right. What do you end up doing? Like, how do you really, you know- Start going in taking suitcase of medication, how many people are you gonna save with the luggage of antibiotic? And now you gotta build it to a bigger scale. That's what the Israelis say, okay, let's take buses. Okay, and you're behind that too. I was you're, the you're first behind... bus. His efforts were so substantial that Israel eventually took over. I kick-started the beginning of it, and then the military took it to the government level and made a huge difference in many people's lives. Oh, yeah. Over 5,000 people survived because of Israel. When the question arises of, I can do something, will I do it? You say yes, time and time again. And people are watching this and saying, well, he's done it. What can I do? What is your answer to that question? Jesus, in Israel, 2,000 years ago, he thought the same exact question. What can he do to change the world at the time? And he did it. Just think, what can I do to make the world a better place? Just do one, one, one good thing. And that will lead to another good thing, and another good thing. After being on the run for thousands of years, the people of Israel are finally back in their land, doing God's good and fulfilling their calling as a blessing to the nations. I'm a grandson of Chaya. She was an Auschwitz survivor, and I got the feeling from her that as a Jew in Israel, it's the most valuable position that I can get to save people on behalf of the country of Israel, I'll do it. What are you feeling at the end of that day? You know, you're taking off your tie. You no, know, you say, well, thank you to the Lord that we have the capacity to help others. The highest form of humanity is when you help others. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions in comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.